All right, for this little video, I'm going to show you how you can use your TI-83 Plus or a TI-84 series of calculators to solve linear equations. And these linear equations can be something as simple as oh, uh, 2x equals 5. Uh, it could be x plus 10 is equal to 20. You know, something as simple as that. However, it can go very complicated such as the one in purple. The one in purple is the one we're going to work on today. And I'm just simply going to show you how to use the graphing aspect of the calculator to do that. If you want uh, handwritten instructions, I do have those. And if you check the description here in the YouTube video box, uh, you'll find a link to, uh, to those instructions. Go ahead and uh, print those off for your own keeping. Just know that these instructions can be used for any of these linear equations. Just Remember to replace the, the equation that I use with your equation. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, first thing we got to do is turn on the calculator. So we'll press this little on button here, and it goes to the home screen. Now, to enter the graphing mode, we need to press the Y equals button. And that's up just on the left side of the calculator, just under the screen. Once we do that, we're, we're uh, put into the screen that you enter your equations into in order to graph. And what you'll see is in option number four here, I have an equation already in there. I don't actually want that in there though. So to clear that out, just simply use your up and down arrows to scroll down to the offending uh, um, equation here. Press the clear button. What you'll notice are two things. One, the equation goes away, and two, this little equal sign used to be highlighted, it's no longer highlighted. If you simply just want to shut off an equation, you can scroll over using your left arrow key, scroll over to that equal sign, press enter, and that'll just shut it off, And you, but you'll keep whatever, uh, whatever equation is already in there. Okay, now we want to go ahead and use y1 and y2 just for simplicity. Uh, if you're already familiar with graphing, you can use certainly any of the equations that you want to use. Uh, but I like to keep things nice and simple, and this is the easiest way to do it. So, what we have to do is we have to enter the equation. We want to start by typing the left side of the equation into y1. And so we're going we're gonna to type in 2x plus 3. Except we're going to type that into our calculator. So we're going to press 2. And now we're not going to use this, um, this little green X down by the store key. Instead, we're going to use this X, T, theta, N button. This is your variable button. So you're going to press that. It'll put an X in there. It knows which one to use because of settings on your calculator. If it uses any other, uh, any other uh, letter in here, that means that you're not in the proper mode and you simply need to go back to mode and change it to function or F-U-N-C. All right, we're going to continue with this as plus 3, and that's all we're going to put into Y1, just that left side. Press Enter, and that will just go ahead and advance to Y2, and also keep your selection in Y1. You'll notice that when I did that, as soon as I started typing, my equal sign became highlighted. This just says that this will be active when I go to graph. On the right, or in Y2, we're going to go ahead and put the right side. So we put 4, parenthesis. Remember to use this XT theta N button for X minus 6, parenthesis minus 2. If you use the negative key at any point, understand that the calculator knows the difference between negative and minus. And so if you see a little short minus, that means you press the negative key by mistake. Just go ahead and be aware of that. Now that we have our equations in, we have to set up our graphing window. I'm going to do this in a fairly standard way because I, I, want, I want it to kind of go along with any equation we use. So to force the calculator to, to, zoom, or to uh, graph this in a standard window, I'm going to press the Zoom button. And then I'm going to select option 6 for Zoom Standard. I'm going to scroll, but you can press 6 and it will automatically do it. So I'm going to press enter here. At this point, it's going to graph our two lines. All we're doing here is we're setting the window. And so uh, when you set the window, 
you'll notice that this window is wider than it is tall. However, X's will go, this, this horizontal, you'll go from this point here, which is 0. You can go negative 10, either left or down, and positive 10, either right or up. So now that we've got our, our windows selected, we notice that we can't actually find an intersection point between these two. That intersection point is the answer. Our answer, the one that we want for x, is going to be at that intersection point. It looks like they're coming together eventually, we just can't see it. So we're going to go ahead and zoom out. To do that, press the zoom button. You'll see option 3 is, is an option to zoom out. Again, you can scroll or you can simply press the button, th the 3 button. If you do that, it'll auto select and kick you back out to the main screen. Now, if you can see it, right here at the center of my graph, I have a blinking dot. That's going to be the center of my zoom feature, meaning that it's going to, it's going to bring that point to the center of the screen when it zooms. You can move that around using your, your arrow buttons. It doesn't have to stay in one spot. However, I'm going to go ahead and put it back at 0, 0 because I just like it. I like to start there. Once you have your point selected, go ahead and press Enter, and it will zoom out by a factor of 4. So instead of being negative 10 to 10 on the X, it'll be uh, negative 40 to 40 on the X. And now, as you can see, in the graph screen, it looks like we've captured the intersection point. That's good because that's where our answer is. So let's go ahead and find that intersection point. To do that, we can calculate it. We can have the calculator calculate it by pressing second and then the calculate button or the option. If, it's the, if you press the second button and press trace, that opens up the calculate menu. That's why that CLAC is uh, in yellow. It's in blue on the TI-84. Now, we have several options here. Most of them, or a couple of them, you're not used in algebra, and uh, some of them will be used later in my classes. However, you may understand what some of them are now. All right, we want to go to intersect. So we want option number five, because we want to find that intersection point. I'm simply going to press five to activate it. Remember, you can scroll down. If you scroll down, press enter. Once you do that, you're going to come to this screen. And it's going to ask you a series of questions because it wants to figure out which ones you're talking about. We want to find an intersection between our Y1 and our Y2. And so our first curve, even though these are lines, our first curve is going to be Y1. And you'll notice that in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. It says y1, 2x plus 3. Yes, that's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and press Enter. And then it's going to ask us, well, where's that second curve? Because in order to have an intersection point, you need two things, at least. And so where's that second curve? It is y2. We want to know where they, those two cross, so press Enter. The next thing it's going to do is ask for a guess. Now later on, you may have a, a, something that, a curve that comes down and crosses a line twice. If that happens, you need to guess close to one of those points to tell the calculator, pick that point. For right now, it only intersects at one point, and so we can simply guess anywhere. Press Enter. The calculator will do some work, and eventually it'll come up and you'll find a point where it intersects. That point is 14.5 on the X and 32 on the Y. Now, we don't care about the Y. We just care about this 14.5. That's our answer. And so we have now that X equals 14.5. Or if we put this into a fraction, it's 14 and 1 half. Or 2 times 14 is 28, plus 1 is 29 halves. I, any one of these three options will work. Once you finish that, you're done. I mean, technically, this answers the question. However, you want to go back and test this to make sure. So that's what I would do. Take this 14.5, plug it in. 
The easiest way to do that, and you can exit this graphing screen by hitting second quit or clear. I'm going to go second quit. And I can simply test this. I have another video on how to test it. And so I'm not going to run through the uh, run through it. I'm just going to simply uh, find out if I get the same answer on both sides. So 2 times 14.5 plus 3. I get 32. Okay. On the other side, I get 4 times the quantity 14.5 minus 6, close that parenthesis, minus 2. I get 32. So 32 equals 32 is a true statement. Therefore, x must be that. That's how you use your calculator to solve these linear, uh, these linear problems.